God created each of us differently for a good purpose and for good reason. And each of our differences will play into the story he has for us to tell. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. Today's guests celebrate what makes them different and how we're all a vital part of the family of God. Authors Sally Clarkson and Nathan Clarkson and writer Haley Morgan. First up, as a mother of four, Sally Clarkson embraced the unique traits of her children, but noticed that her son Nathan struggled with a few things her other children didn't. Nathan learned a little bit differently, showed hyperactive tendencies, and seemed controlled by obsessive thoughts. Determined her son's actions were signs of a gift, not a malady, she prayed for wisdom to guide him toward a productive life, while showing him he was fiercely loved, just as he was. That grounding helped Nathan work through what made him different, and now, as an adult, he is a successful actor and filmmaker. He joins his mother today to talk about their new children's book that speaks to kids with different interests and abilities called Only You Can Be You. My name is Sally Clarkson. I'm an author and a podcaster, blogger. I just love words and messages. And I have four children, adult children. And I just love the Lord, and I love encouraging women to live uh, into their potential in Christ. My name is Nathan Clarkson, and I am Sally Clarkson's son. I am a an actor, an author, a filmmaker. I live kind of between Los Angeles and New York. Um, I wrote a book called Different with my mom about my upbringing as kind of the quote-unquote different kid. And uh, in between those things, I also act in TV shows and movies when I can. You know, from the time I've been very young, I've realized I was different. Um, you know, when I would look around the world, I would see all the kids in class sitting very still and doing their homework very well. And I would be bouncing my foot and, and moving and making jokes and distracted. And even at home, um, I was dealing with these really intense um, uh thoughts that result from something called obsessive compulsive disorder and they're obsessive thoughts that would kind of plague my mind all the time and i need to wash my hands and take showers all the time it was just really little piece especially in my um, younger and adolescent years and you know the thing about feeling different uh, and realizing your difference especially as a young kids it can make you feel very alone it can make you feel very different and sometimes it can just make you feel bad or broken because you don't work like the rest of the world and so it was an interesting thing to feel all these things and then look at the God from the Bible, and he's one of peace and love. And as I started digging in, even in the midst of my adolescent angst, I found a God who says he loved me as I was, and I found a God I, who said I was made for a purpose and that all these differences could be used for his glory and for the story that he wanted to tell with my life. And just that fact was something that brought me peace in the midst of the storm of my young life that I was living with all these differences. I knew I was different. All these things kind of added up and showed me that I, I didn't quite fit in. And like I said, that can be a very lonely thing. And especially in the world, when it wants uh, to fit you into a mold and wants you to look like something, to be like something there's a so-called normal that it wants you to fit. It could be a lot of pressure, especially from school and from friends, from peer groups. But I was, what I was blessed enough to have was a family and a mother who I could come home to. And I didn't find pressure. I didn't find pressure to be like my siblings or to be like anything else. In fact, I heard different messages and those messages were you are created exactly how God intended. All the differences you have, God will use, and I love you the way you are right now. And so just having that through my teenage years and my even my preteen years and all the way into my adulthood has really shaped me and shaped my mind um, to not despair when I feel sometimes alone because of my differences, but instead say, no, I'm going to believe the messages that were given to me in my home, and I'm going to believe that I was created uniquely for a purpose and that God loves me the way I am and will use me the way I am. I've always told my children, you might as well decide to like the story that God has given you because it's not going to change anyway. <laughs> In other words, this is um, the day, this is the place the Lord has made. Let's rejoice in this place and find out how we can bring light to any of our dark corners, but also to learn to be content within the story that we've been given. Jesus Calling. I will read it and I will ponder it, and um, it gives me food for thought for the rest of my day. Every day, no matter how busy I am, I try to say, God, please be in charge of my life, my thoughts, my, my time. And then when I read these wonderful, intimate thoughts about the heart of Christ for us, I, I seek to make it stay at the 
at my frontal lobe all day long so that I can be aware of, of his kind of fingerprints, his, his music, his voice, his dance during the day. And I just really feel like um, she has captured the heart of Christ for me. So here's today's Jesus Calling. I made you in my image, and I hid heaven in your heart. Do not be afraid to be different from other people. The more closely you follow my leading, the more fully I can develop your gifts. To follow me wholeheartedly, you must relinquish your desire to please other people. However, your closeness to me will bless others by enabling you to share brightly in this very dark world. You know, I grew up the kid who had such a hard time focusing on one thing at a time. And now in my life, I do so many different things all at once. It's so neat to me to see that these differences actually play into who I was supposed to be. Um, I used to, you know, think outside the bounds and not fit very well into uh, the quiet settings of a classroom and things like that. And now in my life as an actor and a performer, I get to um, perform and express myself and be passionate. So it's so cool to me to see all these differences that maybe when I was young, could make me feel alone or like I didn't fit in, now play into the story that God wants me to tell. One of the most profound things I began to understand was that I needed to love Nathan for who he was, for who God made him right as he was, and not wait to love him until he became what I thought he should be. And I didn't want Nathan to feel like he was too much. I wanted him to feel like who he was was the wonderful story, the wonderful imprint of God's love on the world that um, God intended right from the beginning. I have um, an arena where I get a lot of letters from people. I began to realize that uh, we live in a culture that appreciates cookie-cutter people. Uh, We want to all try to conform and live up to the standards of someone else, but in actuality, I was thinking, I want to give freedom to the parents and the moms in my arena because each of us has a different fingerprint, different DNA. We have unique personalities, and we can each give glory to God with the different things that we have. And so Nathan came to me and he said, you know, Mom, let's write a book together and tell people about how you and I really became the best of friends, how we have flourished in our family and in our relationship so that we can give them the freedom to be able to admit that they have struggles in their home as well and that struggles are just a part of what every family feels. And it was from that, us telling our story, that we received so many messages and so many um, connections to our story that inspired us also to write a children's book for younger kids to start getting this. And that's kind of um, where this whole idea for Only You Can Be You came from, uh, which is really um, exciting because I know this will really touch a lot of kids. I think that if all parents could understand how deeply their children want to be loved just as they are, that when a parent would hold their child closely in their lap and maybe tossle their head or uh, and, and go through the pages of the book to say, let's see if you find yourself here. There's so many beautiful different people. I love the verse that says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we were hoping that this book might be a sort of a renewal for people to really understand how important it is to give children a legacy of every single person is worthy of respect because they were made in the image of this amazing God. Every single personality, whether they're loud or, or whether they don't, uh, they're shy, whether they um, like adventure or they like sitting at home reading, we wanted to give a book to parents that would imprint the minds of their children to say, all of us are an incredible, magnificent reflection of the fingerprints of God as He made us each individually for His own glory. I would want parents to know that words matter, that speaking forward into their children's lives, that holding them as as they're reading the book, that when they say, I believe you're going to have a special story to tell in your lifetime, you're going to bring light to the world in amazing ways that no one else will ever be able to. Let's imagine you're one of these people. And what do you think that um, God might have you do to bring His light and beauty to the world? just like all of these special, amazing, and wonderful children. And so I would love for them to use it as a tool 
just to really focus on their children's hearts to speak acceptance, love, and affirmation for exactly who that child is at the, in their lifetime at that moment, because those are the kinds of foundations that serve children the rest of their lives. You can find Sally and Nathan's children's book, Only You Can Be You, at your favorite book retailer today. Stay tuned for our next guest, author Haley Morgan, after a brief message about how you can join the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call every Tuesday morning. Did you know that Sarah Young, the author of Jesus Calling, prays for her readers each day? In that spirit, we want to extend the Jesus Calling prayer community out to you in a more personal way. Each Tuesday morning, you can dial into the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call, where the team from Jesus Calling and special guests will minister to us during a 10-minute call to reflect on that day's passage from Jesus Calling, read scripture references, and pray together for each other and our world. Prayer call times are 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. Mountain, and 5 a.m. Pacific, and are for U.S. only. For more information on the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call or to submit prayer requests, please visit jesuscalling.com slash prayer dash call. Again, to join us in this community of prayer every Tuesday morning, please visit jesuscalling.com slash prayer dash call. When Haley Morgan met Jesus for the first time as a teenager, she felt a missing puzzle piece in her life click into place. For the next few years, as she grew into adulthood and into her faith, Haley tried desperately to please God and others, only to grow frustrated when she came up short. But it was after she co-authored books with her friend Jess Connolly, including their latest devotional called Always Too Much, Never Enough, that Haley found freedom in letting go of perfect and becoming content with love. My name is Haley Morgan, and I am an author and an entrepreneur, and I have four little boys. Both my parents really were those people who really empowered you to think that you could do anything. And that was, that was a really keystone part of my childhood in kind of who I am now. I always had a really strong sense of right and wrong, but I didn't have words to put to any of it. I would got to be a teenager. And by that point in my life, my parents had split up and we were going through a very tumultuous time in our family. Even though I had a really strong sense of right and wrong, I started, by the time I was about 15, I started kind of making decisions that weren't in line with kind of my own set of morals, but I just really wanted my parents' attention. I really wanted them to say like, hey, this isn't right. Or hey, good job, one of the two. I just wanted them to pay some attention. And so I started going to youth group um, with my best friend because her parents were really strong believers and we wanted them to think that we were good kids so we could go do bad things, (laughs) which looking back just feels crazy. I started to be mentored by two older women and it really changed my whole life. From being 15 and kind of meeting Jesus for the first time, I was 1,000% bought in. I mean, I really realized that this was what I had been longing for. This was um, a safe place, like Jesus the Father. They were safe places for me in a time of my life where I did not feel like I had that. And it felt like all of a sudden there was a plan for my life that I had wondered so much before that. My husband and I met at youth group, so we met shortly after I became a believer, and he was he led worship at the youth group. I mean, we were such like a cliche. We were like the cute youth group couple. I got married very young. I got married three weeks after I turned 20, and then six months later, I was pregnant. So, you know, a little more than a year after we got married, I had my first son when I was 21. So I really became an adult as I was becoming a mother and as I was a newlywed. And we had also moved 600 miles away from home. So there kind of was like this cataclysmic event in my life where all of a sudden it was like, oh, I am an adult. (laughs) And in a lot of ways, I still feel like I a kid in some regard. And that was where I started to untangle the idea of grace. 
and grace for every day, not just grace as a one-time event. You know, looking back, I think as new believers often do, I swung really far from um, I swung really far from grace into thinking that I had to do it right. I thought that sure I accepted Jesus and that was great and that saved me from all the things I had done wrong up to that point in my life. But now I knew better and so I should do better. And from that point I exhausted myself trying to be good. And I don't know why I did that or where I got that from, but it became um, part of me. And in some ways, I think it's a natural part of when you become a Christian. You, It's like being a child. And you know how children are really black and white and things are either right or they're wrong. And I think I had just not grown yet, hadn't matured yet. But I, I made myself so tired trying to be good, and that made me really prideful. It made me really mad and annoyed that other people weren't trying as hard as I was to be good. Once I really understood grace in a, I have to apply the gospel to my life every day, to myself every day, I'm never going to grow out of needing it, that freed me up so much to then actually walk with the Lord not just try to please him and try to impress him. And so from there is where I started writing and people started listening and it was just a natural a natural fit for me. So I feel grateful to have a an avenue to be able to kind of channel these things that I feel like I always say that my my main goal is to remind women what's true of God and what's true of themselves. I'm grateful for all the ways that we're all different. I've always loved bookstores, libraries. I just love to be around books. And so I found Jesus Calling just in a bookstore one day, and I've gifted it to a lot of people since then. But it's for me, it's a great tool to kind of, for me, it's a warm up. It's a great tool to use um, as I sit down and try to quiet my heart. It's we live in a really busy world. We live in a super noisy world and it can be really hard for me to go in to Bible study, like cold, like even in my personal devotional time, it can be hard for me to just sit down and open up to like Luke 14. And so for me, a devotional book like Jesus calling is perfect for kind of, it's like a warm up stretch for me. It's a way that I can, it's an easily approachable, easily digestible kind of bit about God that helps me to remember his goodness, remember his kindness, remember why I'm coming to him in the first place. And so for me, it's a gift. I mean, it's a gift when when we can kind of have an eye into other people's devotional practices. And I'm grateful for it for that reason. So I started writing a blog that had a little more purpose and a little more intention. It was called a uh, tiny twig goes out on a limb and it was 52 adventures for the passionate life. Each week I set out to do a different adventure and I would spend one day talking about why I was doing it, one day showing how I did it, one day recapping it. And that sense of structure really gave me s- limitations and kind of made a box that I could fill with my words and I just realized that I could Right. I wrote an ebook about that blog or from that series. And through a funny chain of events, I just started interacting with people who just assumed that I would write. Like it was just an assumption that someday I would write a book. And the thought had not crossed my mind. And so I was like, oh, this could be a thing. This could be something that I could do. And my friend Susie Davis, she's an author too. She is kind of a spiritual mother to me. And she said, Haley, I was probably 26 at the time, I think. So about seven years ago, she said, Haley, I I believe, I really think that you will write a book, but please, please don't rush it. She was like, you have your whole life to do that, but you're you're very young. Your kids are really little and they really need a lot from you. And once you start this writing thing, it's very hard to get off and then decide you want to get back on later. 
And so she just said, like, when you start, just know that that's where the Lord is leading you. And I'm like probably every good daughter, like her being my spiritual mom, I was like, okay, sure. (laughs) And um, now looking back, it was very, very good advice. My friend Jess Connolly and I, we did a lot of things in ministry together and we just really started kicking around this idea of wild and free and what it looked like to really walk as God made us, like in the fullness, the quirks, the weirdness of how God made us. And then also to walk in the freedom that Christ died to give us. And that became a message that felt too hard to keep keeping in. And that's when we knew it was kind of time to try, kind of time to try to write. So that's what we did. And that was when um, Wild and Free was published. And then we also did a devotional together called Always Enough, Never Too Much. And when we put it out into the world, I think I had hoped that I would all of a sudden be an expert on it. I felt let down that I didn't have it perfected, that I wasn't able to stand in it perfectly. And that really calls back a lot of like kind of my college self was this desire to have it figured out once and for all to not have to keep needing it. And yet in my flesh, I still wasn't able to live it out perfectly every day. In my own walk with the Lord, the Lord has used my failures in equal or greater measures than he has used my successes to draw me closer to him. And ultimately, that's my aim. Like, it's great if people learn about the Lord because of something that I say or something that I write. Like, that's great. And that that is a gift for me to be able to join in the work that God's already doing. But what really, really matters in my life with God is that at the end of it, that I have grown in intimacy and grown in integrity with him. I find that in the generation kind of coming up behind me, I see a lot of fear of failure. It's a lot of desire to get things perfectly on the first try. And I really want to dispel the myth that like God is proud of perfection, that the only way that we can be perfect is through Jesus Finding my own voice was really fun, and it felt like I really grew as a writer and as a believer. Just, I had to stand firm in what I was saying on my own. I mean, there are times where you have to step out and you have to say, I'm owning this. This is the Lord and I. He's called me to do this, and so I'm going to. And that's not always easy, but I want us to feel freed up to to earnestly seek Jesus and then to go after what what it seems that he's calling us in and we're not always going to get it right and that's okay too. Learn about Haley's book co-written with Jess Connolly called Always Too Much Never Enough at Haley's website which you can find at haleymorgan.com. If you'd like to hear more stories about people who've learned to embrace what makes us different and unique, check out our episode featuring photographer Jeremy Cowart and newscaster Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, we speak with entertainer Kristen Chenoweth. As a star on stage, television, and in films, Kristen's faith, which began as a young girl, has never wavered. She shares how her personal relationship with God has carried her through problems big and small. I do think that when things get really tough and I can take a moment and say, oh right, remember I'm supposed to walk with you today and you're there to take care of all my problems. There is a peace in that. And this, not just this business, but this life is, we have a new set of interesting problems with today's time. And the more it comes, the more I talk to God all the time. I I actually talk to God all the time. People don't know it, but I can be in the car talking to him. That's the best part about having a personal relationship with God. Do you love hearing these stories of faith weekly from people like you whose lives have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Calling Stories of Faith podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. 
If you like what you're hearing, leave us a review so that we can reach others with these inspirational stories. And you can also see these interviews on video as part of our original web series, with a new interview premiering every other Sunday on Facebook Live. Find previously broadcast interviews on our YouTube channel on IGTV or on JesusCalling.com slash video.